Cheers and welcome my friends, I'm Horat Drak and we are playing Europa Universalis 4 together. Now finally we will unpause the game and let it run for a bit to recruit our own Latin medieval infantry. Our trade protecting ships are leaving the harbor of Lübeck to get out there, help our merchants protect against pirates and um, yeah, not so much to the ships of other nations. They will get hostile to you if you are at war, but I think they'll leave the merchants in peace. But piracy was a pretty big problem around this time. There were lots of pirates, and there were quite a lot of pirates here on, on Gotland at some time. And the Hansa historically um, <clears throat> took a lot of expeditions against pirates to make the Baltic safe. Um... I think I'll bring up the speed a bit. Yeah, what I did not go into from in the Holy Roman Empire screen is these um, countries are electors. You can see here the, the shield icon. You can see who they are backing as the next emperor. When the emperor dies, a new emperor will be will be elected by the elector states. These states are sort of the, the VIPs in the Holy Roman Empire. You can see them in the Imperial map mode. They are this brownish color. So, um, until until the Emperor passes a reform that basically makes, makes it hereditary that they are the Emperor. Um, our diplomatic situation... Oh, sorry. The Kingdom of Italy and the Empire. For years now, imperial authority over the Kingdom of Italy has been waning. Successive emperors have failed to impose their will on the Italian states and large areas that are formerly part of the empire have been lost to Venice and the papal states who reject the empire's right to them. Unless northern Italy is firmly brought back into the empire, the states there may slip out of imperial control forever. Yeah, Austria will have to deal with that. Um, this, um, this kind of thing basically started with um, um, Friedrich I, Barbarossa, who um, warred incessantly against the um, Italian states. I think I will decrease the local autonomy in Bremen and in Hamburg. It will give us some revolt risk, some provincial unrest, but it might increase our force limit enough to... I don't know. Yeah, let's see if it's calculated anew in the next month. I would like to have one more unit. Now our diplomatic situation is such that we have already alliances, uh, contrary to most countries. At the start of the game we are allied with Riga, Lüneburg, Magdeburg and Oldenburg. These are all um, small cities around here, just to simulate a bit more what the Hansa actually was. Now this is Oldenburg, this is Lüneburg, this is Magdeburg, and this is Riga over here. These are our allies. Riga is, tends to be a, a rather worthless ally because they are pretty far away, but these three states, especially since, um, since the last expansion, Common Sense, that gave independent states um, this plus six force limit for, for independent nations, Smaller nations have become, yeah, pretty okay allies. You do not have to ally always with a great country. An alliance of four or five smaller states can also bring you down to your knees if they yeah, if they do it cleverly. Oh, we shouldn't actually do that. Where uh, although our cash flow is pretty bad, I want more and more unit. Um, this has only. 0.2 per month maintenance and this has 0.5 per maintenance so if I build the knights we will have no income anymore whatsoever and we might even get into the red and that is not what we want we want to attack uh, Saxe Launburg as soon as we can and we want also start as soon as we can just to just to join our land up here I, I know I said it doesn't make sense for the Hansa really to have much territory. That is why we won't go into into Germany. We won't be expanding that much. Our goal is to to pull the trade 
into Lübeck and into our into our nodes and to expand along our trade routes not not meddle in the uh, German politics we want just to be left in peace and uh, turn a profit I'm sure some nobles will call that dishonorable but we are we are patricians and uh, burghers in, in principle so we group that army up this is called army von Lübeck but you can change your, your army names um, Write me in the comments if you want to have an army uh, named after you. I will gladly do so. Now this will be the, uh, the Republican. Holy cow! Republican guard. This icon means that whenever I merge this unit with another unit, the name will stay. I'm really glad that they made it that way. Uh, customize your army names for a long time but if you merge them with other armies could be that your name was lost and that could get a bit annoying now Muscovy has declared war against Novgorod already so it doesn't seem like we will be able to grab some Russian territory that's okay though we don't need war to pull out the trade from them just have to up our economic gain uh, game So we now possess claims against these two countries and we might start to attack them right away. Werden has... oh, they are allied with Oldenburg. So... If I attack Werden, Oldenburg will be called into the war. That is not good. That is not good at all. I think we'll do this by ourselves. So I think I'll just attack Saxe Launburg on my own. I will. I have the choice to call in my allies. And this um, check mark says if they will join. You can see their reasons why they join or they don't. They trust me. And Lüneburg really likes me. Oh no, they hate. They hate Saxe Launburg attitude towards enemies. And Riga says basically, no, it's too far off. Um, yeah, just do it by yourselves. We'll we'll cheer you from the distance, but we will not provide any help. Yeah, we're going to attack Saxe Launburg, but we will not call any allies. The thing is, if you call your allies for an offensive war, you will not be able to call them in the next ten years for an offensive war. If you get attacked, it's fine; they will help you because it's an alliance after all. But you cannot use them as your attack dog anymore and that's pretty good because formerly some patches ago you could just get a big get a big country as your ally and use them as your attack dog that's no longer the case and i'm glad of it now i declared war with the reason of war to to conquer this land you can see if you go into the diplomacy screen this is the hanseatic conquest of lauenburg We'll bring down the speed a bit and then we march into their province. This uh, little lock symbol says that the unit has moved um, too far to be stopped. The battle is going quite well for us. They are getting, getting kicked into the curb. They have um, not a good leader. Our leader is certainly better. And we won that battle. So, um, they have a fort because this is a capital city, but they only have a capital city fort. So basically we only need three regiments in here and we can pull the rest out. Now how do we do that? We select our army and then we will consolidate our regiments. Basically that means we try to make full strength regiments with the people we have and some regiments will be understaffed and these we will pull out so take you guys out and i think we'll leave yeah i think we'll leave four regiments in here sometimes you have some uh, sort of sortie or something that um, reduces your amount of besiegers and suddenly uh, there are not enough men to besiege 
move them out. And now they will get will not get attrition. These guys, this um, skull symbol says we are suffering some attrition. So basically, some percentage of our men is dying because of lack of food, because the defenders of the city are shooting arrows and yeah, using hot tar to to burn us and and all these nice things. Now we'll just have to to let the siege progress. We can hunger them out. Oh no, the walls have been breached. So our cannons, our rud rudimentary cannons, have made a breach in the wall. We could storm that now, but we'll just we'll just leave it. Um, storming a city is or assaulting a city is very expensive. I do not want to lose many men. I mean, it is, I mean, it is better when the walls are breached, but it's still pretty expensive in men. And um, seeing that we are a very small country, country with a very low manpower pool, we cannot afford to do that. How many defenders are in there? 950. Uh, it looks like it will soon be done. Um, what about Austria? I mean, I should theoretically try to make friends with one of these bigger countries. Perhaps France, perhaps England. Oh, they are at war with Denmark. Why? Yeah, allied with England and Lithuania. Um, that will have to wait. Oh, no, we'll do it now. Bourgeoisie requests privileges. The bourgeoisie class has grown increasingly powerful, uh, increasingly resentful of the power of the noble families and particularly their lack of opportunities in the higher ranks of government. Their only route into power is to marry into poor but well-titled noble families or pry open positions in government circles. Um, um, that's actually not quite true. We are a merchant republic. So you could theoretically just amass a fortune and sit at the table of power, but whatever. We can grant them privileges and lose diplomatic power, or we can deny them privileges and lose admin power. Hmm. I, we will grant them privileges, because that's what we're all about. We're a merchant republic. And we can also better afford to lose 50 diplomatic power. We're gaining quite a bit more of them. We're gaining 7. And the other power points are only increasing by 5 per month. And we will need administrative power to make a core out of this province. You can create cores, but it will cost you, depending on the development of the province. Now the siege of Launburg is going along nicely. That looks good. What's happening here? Brunswick is sieging out Oldenburg. Merchants call for increased imports. The influence of a powerful guild has driven up prices on fish in the Hansa. It has come to the point where traders are finding it cheaper to import goods from abroad to compete with local prices. Something they claim is becoming more difficult due to the current Hanseatic leg legislation on imports. Relax relaxing customs would give our merchants a chance to make beneficial agreements where fish is produced, but the guilds, who are vehemently opposed to this, do serve their purpose as well. So we can decide to produce um, our stuff inside our country or to import it where it's cheap. Our concern must be efficient trade first and foremost. So the traders gain 10 influence, the guilds lose 10 influence, and the Hans against allowed imports. Plus 10 trade power in Baltic Sea. Or we can make some concessions that... Uh, we will make no concessions that may harm the guild. The guilds gain influence. The traders lose influence. And Hamburg gets unrest, but more... Hamburg and Bremen get more production efficiency. 20% for each. What are you producing? You're producing fish and you make me 0.24 production income. What is Bremen producing? Also fish, 0.2. 
Yeah, I think we'll go with the trade. We are a merchant republic and trade is our utmost concern. Traders might become more powerful now. Yeah. With more trade power. Problem is, yeah, we have now a problem with our force limit. And that is not a good thing. So we'll spend some military power by, yeah, let's say, campaigning and propaganda and pulling the right strings to get the aristocrats back into power. Just to have a bigger force limit. Because it will cost you dearly if you go over your force limit. You can do it if you have a lot of money, but um, otherwise you really should stay at the force limit. Mm, but now really is an excellent time to attack Stade. Because their ally Oldenburg is, I hope, getting its butt kicked. No, it isn't. What is this war? What is, what is your war here? Münster conquest of Ostfriesland. So this country tries to conquer this po province, Ostfriesland. I can understand why. It's an, an estuary in the Lübeck note. I really want this province for myself. Would be nice, but these are secondary goals. Our first goal is to connect our country. Our secondary goal will be to get all these provinces of interest. Stettin, um, Ostfriesland and Schierland so that we can have the maximum amount of power in the node without possessing all of its provinces. So, we have won the siege. We can move our whole army in here and join up. Austria declared war against Bohemia. That's a very interesting. Conquest. What are you trying to conquer? Um, Budejovice. So they are trying to conquer this this province here. That's weird, but fair enough. They can they can do it. They are the emperor. And we will um, negotiate a peace with our enemy. You cannot just um, occupy the province and then think it's all okay. You have to meet at the negotiation table. <coughs> I'm sorry, my voice is acting up. You have to meet at the negotiating table and broker a piece. So we will take your province and we will take all your money. Thanks a lot for that. Um, there's nothing more. Oh no, we demand tribute. There's nothing more I can do. So I'll send them this demand and because they are completely occupied they have no choice but to accept it even though it results in their own um, annexation. So send this and then we'll let some time pass and they have accepted our generous offer they are now annexed and this province is ours and we will go ahead and make it a core province of ours um, if you have an army stationed inside a province it will reduce revolt risk you can see here um, friendly troops are reducing the unrest in this province by 2.75 it uh, depends on the number of troops and it caps at around five, I think. So that's okay. Um, we could reduce the autonomy of this of this thing. I think we'll do that because we're easily able to quell any revolts that should, should occur. We can do a national decision. The Adler, from Lübe Adler von Lübeck. On account of the ongoing war in the region, our shipwrights have presented plans for a new warship. The Adler von Lübeck means Eagle von, von Lübeck, Eagle of Lübeck. The ship is massive with more gun ports than any other ship afloat in the Western world. Building it would be expensive, but our navy would be unrivaled in the Baltic for quite some time. Um, we need at least 58 ducats. 30 admin power and our neighboring country has to be at war so we can spend this money and admin power to get a carrack so one of the heavy ships um, it will increase the morale of our navies by 20% our heavy ship costs 
will sink, our shipbuilding time will decrease and our diplomatic technology cost will decrease. I'm not sure this is what I want, but I'll do it anyway. Why not? It will give me one big ship for our war fleet. The, and it's weirdly, it's called Adler von Rostock instead of Adler von Rübeck. That is funny. We'll remedy that as a holy cow. Now, that's done. I suppose there's another ship that's already called Adler von Rübeck. Could that be? Adler von Wismar? No, it isn't. Just made this weird decision on its own. Now we will incorporate this province into our country. We will change all the government officials and hand, hand power out to local nobles and all that stuff to bring it firmly into our grip. And then we will try to conquer the province of Stade um, from Verden. And then we will have one connected territory. But that will have to wait until the next episode. If you enjoyed the episode, please give a like. If you did not enjoy it, please leave a dislike. It's what the function is for. If you want to see more of this series or my other content in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you join me next time. Bye bye.